MBA 633 instructional video prepared by Professor Ahmed Dara School of Management, George Mason University. Uh, in this segment, we will discuss probably the most famous uh, uh, distribution, discrete or continuous, and that's the normal distribution. So in this uh, <clears throat> segment, we will just have a general discussion of the normal distribution, its properties, how to reason with it, how to think about it. And then we will work specific problems in another uh, instructional clip. So as you see from the picture, <clears throat> the normal distribution uh, is a continuous distribution. So the random variable x has to be a continuous random variable. And there are many physical things in nature that are uh, normally distributed. The first thing you notice about the distribution is that it's all it's bell shaped. It's also known as the bell uh, bell curve. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> if you look at the functional expression for the probability density function, you remember we did the continuous uniform distribution. There the density function looked like a rectangle. Every outcome was equally likely. Here in the normal distribution, all outcomes are not equally likely. And an informal way of, uh, of, of characterizing this distribution is that values are more likely to be bunched around the middle. But just looking at it mathematically for a moment, now, or let's say let's look at it pictorially first if you look at the distribution the first thing to notice is that it's symmetric around the middle the middle is the what's called the mean of the distribution is represented by the letter mu and visually the fatness of the bell or thickness of the bell how wide it is uh, <clears throat> one indicator of it is the standard deviation which we represent by the letter greek letter sigma now the probability density function is given by this expression 1 divided by uh, sigma square root of 2 pi uh, e to the minus half which is the square root half x minus mu divided by sigma squared now uh, just a few things about this expression you can see that sigma is in the denominator the uh, the standard deviation so other things remaining equal if the standard deviation were to increase the curve would get fatter. So if sigma were to increase, then this curve would tend to get shorter and fatter. So it's spread out <clears throat> a little bit more. Okay, so it tends to get fatter as uh, the standard deviation increases. Um, if the standard deviation or the spread decreases, then of course the curve gets more peaked and gets narrower. Okay, now <clears throat> the mean is mu and if the mean were to increase everything remained the same the width of the fatness of the curve remains exactly the same it would simply shift to the right so let's say mu were to increase then uh, let me see if i can replicate the curve on top uh, that's approximately a replication and all that has happened is that the curve has shifted to the right Okay, so that's the visual sort of uh, connotation that you should keep in mind based on this expression. In other words, the higher the standard deviation, <clears throat> the more the spread, the fatter the bell curve and the squatter. And the higher the mean, the more laterally shifted it is to the right. Okay, the other thing to notice about the uh, <clears throat> uh, normal distribution uh, is that the random variable theoretically can range from minus infinity to plus infinity now as a practical matter when you work practical problem very often either the upper limit or the lower limit or both will be bounded but mathematically x as far as this density function is concerned x can range from minus infinity to plus infinity okay all right now there is a very special version of the normal distribution which is called the standard normal distribution so if we have a special case of the normal distribution where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one that particular bell curve is called the standard normal distribution and there when we have a standard normal distribution the random variable is usually represented by the letter z not by x or y okay now, based on uh, uh, <clears throat> topics that we covered early on in the course, I think you should recognize what this exponent looks like, uh, means rather, the physical significance of it. X minus mu divided by sigma. You remember what that was. That is simply the standardized value of the point on the x-axis. So this, the, the physically, the exponent that you have here is simply saying how many standard deviations away is this uh, quantity x 
uh, from the middle okay so just because this exponent is squared that is what gives the symmetry to the curve it's uh, it's symmetric on both sides of the mean so in summary the main things to remember uh, to remember about the normal distribution is that it's first of all a continuous distribution so the random variable must be continuous the underlying experiment must have continuous outcomes theoretically the random variable can range from minus infinity to plus infinity although in reality those limits are often uh, bounded and finite uh, it's symmetric around the mean uh, the larger the mean, the more laterally shifted to the right the bell curve will be. And the larger the standard deviation, in other words, larger the spread, the squatter and wider the bell will be. Okay. So if you remember these uh, sort of pictorial characteristics about the, uh, standard de about the normal distribution, you can reason qualitatively about it and then let Excel do the numerical calculations for you. I'll just give you some examples. When you're computing probabilities with the normal distribution or any continuous distribution for that matter, all you should be thinking about is what area under the density function should I be uh, computing. Okay, so here I have a small example. Airlines use data on passenger weight distribution to manage total aircraft weight for flight safety. So they have to distribute the load evenly across uh, the aircraft uh, from front to back. Otherwise, the aircraft in flight tends to pitch up or pitch down and that makes it nasty for the pilots. So Airlines spend a lot of time surveying passengers from time to time and finding out weight distributions. So a recent survey found that the weights of women passengers is normally distributed with a mean of 70 kilos and a standard deviation of 13 kilos. So I've represented that normal distribution uh, by the uh, by the uh, by the first uh, I've represented it by the first curve over here. So that's the curve for women. And the weight for males is also normally distributed with a mean of 92 kilograms and a standard deviation of 16 kilograms. That's the second uh, normal curve. Now, let's say I want to find the probability that a woman passenger who shows up for a flight, the probability that her weight is greater than 75 kilograms. So, let's say this is 75. The probability that X is greater than 75 is simply this shaded area, the area under this curve. Okay? And Unlike, unfortunately, unlike the uh, uniform continuous distribution where I can work nicely with rectangles, this is a, uh, not a convenient shape to work geometrically. So we will see how to use Excel to calculate that area. But conceptually, the main thing you have to figure out is that the area that I want is the area to the right of 75. Similarly, if, I, if, a, if a woman passenger walks up and I want to know what is the probability that this passenger will weigh less than 60 kilograms, then the area that I'm uh, looking at here is let's say 60 and of course the area that I'm, I, I want to uh, uh, compute is this particular area. Once you conceptualize which area you need to compute the area for, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the amount for, then you can have Excel do the calculation for you. So let's not worry about the uh, numerics for the moment. The, the, the challenge here is to figure out which area to compute, uh, to, to, to identify for the probability. So let's take another problem here. So uh, a variant of this one. So a, a male walks up to the um, airline and I want to know the probability that this male is between 80 and 100 kilograms in weight. So the mean is 92. Let's say 80 is somewhere here and 100 is somewhere here. Then the area that I want to compute is this shaded area. So with any continuous distribution, normal or otherwise, when you're computing probabilities, just think in terms of areas under the curve. Okay. Once you have been able to identify the correct area, it will be pretty easy and more or less uh, mechanical to compute uh, to, to, to actually calculate the area using built-in functions in Excel. You will not be calculating the areas uh, manually. So this is what the normal distribution is. Uh, it will be used a lot 
it is by far the most commonly used probability distribution um, certainly for continuous distributions and there are a lot of physical quantities in reality that uh, follow the normal distribution and there is also a very famous uh, theorem called the central limit theorem which we will uh, encounter soon uh, which tells you that under certain conditions uh, variables uh, for large samples and so forth uh, parameters uh, tend, tend to be normally distributed so we can use this particular pattern of uncertainty in a lot of practical circumstances so we have to master this well and in particular how to use the uh, built-in functions in excel to compute various probabilities associated with the normal distribution and that's what we will see in the uh, next uh, video clip